Hello, uh, my name's Chloe Hughes. I'm the Engagement Programmes Manager for The Box. And today I'm going to be talking a little bit about one of our recent projects called The Box on The Box. And so first of all, I'm going to try and share my screen with you. So hopefully you're able to see this now. So um, the Box on the Box um, has been a recent project that we've delivered as part of our work in 2020. And the project used our moving image collection um, to help us to reach isolated people, particularly during the height um, of the pandemic. Before I talk more about the project, I wanted to give you a little bit of context um, about the Box and who we are. And um, so this is the box um, the box uh, formerly known as Plymouth City Museum and Art Gallery is a museum gallery and archive for the 21st century. Uh, we were due to open in May um, of this year, although obviously world events overtook us and so our opening had to be delayed um, it's a fantastic space. Uh, there are a number of permanent galleries and temporary galleries, and it brings together uh, the boxes collections. So from our uh, uh, Southwest Film and Television Archive to the Southwest Image Bank to the Plymouth and Devon West Record Office, all of these amazing collections that share and showcase the city's heritage all together under one roof um, in the former museum and the extension um, to the former museum, providing the perfect location um, for our work. So when you visit the box, um, you'll notice that we have collections that span uh, a range of subjects. So when you first arrive, you'll be greeted by the most stunning um, figureheads. Uh, you can get a sense of the size and the scale of these figureheads here. Um, and they are suspended from our ceiling uh, within our South Hall main entranceway. Um, and the figureheads really set the box up um, to talk much more about Plymouth's link with the water um, and how uh, water and industry around water has really shaped the Plymouth um, that we know today. There are also um, a range of collections relating to natural history. So here you can see an image of our Mammoth Gallery. Um, our Mammoth Gallery is particularly popular um, with lots of families, but it's a really a great opportunity for people to delve into um, the natural history within our collections and learn a little bit more um, about the world around us. We've also got beautiful uh, collections of art. So here you can see um, one of the large decorative art cases within our, our art gallery, uh, but we also ho hold a large number of paintings, prints, decorative arts um, work um, it, within the collection, um, much of which um, is on display. And again, we have a high uh, number of collections that are um, within our stores as well, which we hope to bring out in the future. Again, um, this gallery looks at the stories uh, of people who have left Plymouth and travelled the world um, and looking at those stories through a range of uh, different contexts and perspectives. Um, and here we've got an image of one of our current contemporary art pieces on display. This is a piece by an artist called Christopher Baker um, and again shows you the breadth um, that the box uh, has. So from contemporary art to historic collections, natural art sciences, history, art, and much, much more. The image I'm showing you here gives you a snippet of our Media Lab Gallery. So our Media Lab Gallery is really, uh, uh, brings to the fore our moving image collection. So we've got something like over 250,000 um, uh, films um, within our moving image collection. It is one of the largest um, regional archives um, in the UK and it's a fascinating and amazing asset and a very popular gallery um, with lots of our visitors. And it was this, uh, the work from the moving image collection that we really wanted to think about um, as the pandemic um, was hitting. So we have worked for a number of years on a range of different projects um, with older people, with people who may be socially isolated or lonely. We've done a lot of extensive work with people with dementia. And as we were watching the news and, and I think gripped like so many people around the country, 
we were very aware that we wanted to do something in response. And we were particularly aware that although there was lots of information online, if you might be a family or if you were perhaps stuck at home in lockdown with, with not much um, not much to do. Um, there was very limited um, activity on offer for people living within care home settings. And we were really reflecting on the fact that often in those settings, the kind of the rhythm of the week, the regular people who you might expect to come, um, whether that's someone to come and, you know, the hairdresser or someone to come and do the bingo. Um, when those things were pulled away from people, um, that would be a really difficult time. And without family and friends to visit too, we were thinking about what we might be able to do that would help support people to connect with the world again and remember slightly happier times. So from this work um, and knowing that we wanted to do something and being very well aware that we have this fantastic, amazing moving image collection, we thought, well, how can we use the um, uh, how can we harness um, the use of the technology that I think all of us um, had been getting to grips with as everyone was increasingly shifting to working from home and uh, using Zoom and Skype and Teams and what else. Um, and so we hit upon um, the idea uh, the box on the box. So the box on the box um, uses Microsoft Teams, which probably most of you are familiar with, uh, to live stream content from our film archive interspersed with commentary from the box staff and curators. So uh, for those watching in their own home, they can watch on a tablet, on a laptop, on a smart TV, and they can sit back, relax and see moving image from our collection and then hear our curators talking about what you're watching and also giving some gentle reminiscence prompts as well. So the idea we came up with very quickly, um, but then of course we had the challenge of putting that into practice. And I think as anyone who has been working from home in this pandemic has found, technology can often thwart us. Um, so our first step was to work with the transformation team at Plymouth City Council, um, who were fantastic in supporting us to get teams uh, to, uh, to trial different ways of making teams work. Um, and after what felt like numerous tests um, with technology dropping out and, and realising which buttons we all needed to press and when we were presenting and when we weren't, uh, we realised we were able to make this technology work. And one of the reasons we wanted to use Teams was that some of the content within our um, moving image collection has got copyright. So we were aware we couldn't necessarily pre-record. Um, and we also wanted to have that um, contact that we would have. So in our typical work, when we might go into a care home setting, our facilitator would be chatting to those people. And we really wanted to bring that element um, out. Um, cleverly with Teams, when you live stream, there's a Q&A function. So we would often have people commenting or asking us questions about what they were viewing or, or reminiscing along with us. And we were able to kind of read that out and engage with them um, a little bit like a, like a phone in on a radio. Um, so once we managed to get the technology uh, kind of all singing and all dancing and we were getting more familiar with that, the next step for us was about making sure we were connecting and collaborating with a range of different partners who all had expertise in this field. So we worked really closely with adult social care um, within the council, um, but also with a number of care homes across the city. Um, so uh, we had done a lot of work with various um, partners and networks and care homes in the city previously. Um, and their response when we first spoke to them about, about this project was overwhelming. They were really keen to get involved, so keen that one care home actually went out and bought a smart TV just so they could participate. So quite quickly we began to realise actually there was a real need um, for this work. The next thing that we realised we needed to tweak was what the experience was like. Um, so we played with the length. And we found that a session of about 30, 40 minutes um, was more than appropriate. And we were also very aware that people were watching within their own settings. Potentially, um, some people might be dropping in and out for whatever reason. Um, alarms might be going off. Staff may also be supporting with various medical um, needs or the kind of day to day living um, that would be happening. So 
we were very aware that we needed to do something that was very light touch and that people could kind of dip in and out of um, as suited them. We also uh, thought very carefully about the themes and what people might reminisce um, with and what really connected to them. So we've had a range of themes from transport um, to food to a night on the tiles, uh, all sorts of different subjects that have kind of hooked people um, and, and kind of brought them, brought them along with us. So we piloted um, the project initially, we ran a couple of sessions and then spoke in detail to those care homes and got their feedback, what was working for them, what we needed to tweak. Um, and we delivered a first series um, that started in early June um, and ran through until the end of the summer. And then we took a short break um, and began a second series um, back in September, which will run all the way through until Christmas. Um, it, the results of it have been amazing. So not only have we had fantastic quotes and responses from people, um, we, we've also had over 1600 views within the first series alone, um, and we'll be picking up more on the data of the second series shortly too. And I think one of the strengths of the project has been that it is about using our collection um, and using it in, in a dynamic and different way and in a way that really helps and supports people um, at this time. We're very aware that lots of people are getting to grips with and using technology. So the fact we could use Teams, that it was free and it didn't matter if someone didn't have a Teams account, they could literally just click the link um, and join us and watch along, made sure it was as accessible um, as possible. So you might be wondering kind of what's next um, and we are too. Uh, obviously we've reviewed how the first series has gone and that moved us forward into the second series and now as we're thinking about what the longer term impact and how long we may well be living um, with these restrictions due to Covid, we're thinking carefully about how we can continue to develop the project for the future. I think what I would say to anyone thinking about doing something similar is that actually it's been the simplicity of this project that has worked really well. Um, it's been the fact that we've got amazing staff with fantastic knowledge and expertise. And although it's challenged all of us to learn how to present and engage with people via a screen, um, when we're so used to working with people very closely and in a room um, and in a physical setting together, that's also offered us great uh, learning um, too. This also will help us develop our reminiscence service um, for the future. So although to date we've had memory loans boxes and lots of projects and activity, this is a whole brand new kind of uh, string to our bow essentially in thinking about how we connect with people um, across Plymouth. The one of the surprising, one of the other surprising aspects for me has also been who took part. So originally we pitched this very much at care homes, but we've had a number of others um, get involved too. So We've had care homes, residential settings, um, we've got groups of people who formerly met at, as part of memory cafes, watching along individually at home, and uh, we've had NHS wards. So it's really broadened to, to almost anyone who may be older and perhaps socially isolated or, or lonely as a result of the pandemic and who perhaps can't quite um, engage um, with others in, in the ways in which they might once have done. We've really enjoyed being part of the project um, and the project has only been possible due to the support of a number of um, funders. Um, the box uh, is part of Plymouth City Council um, and we're enormously grateful to all the um, uh, to the council and to um, the various departments, transformation and adult social care, particularly for their support um, for the project. And it was also funded through Arts Council, HLF, um, and BFI uh, as well. So there's been a lot of support and involvement um, to get the project to this stage. If you do have any questions, you'd like to find out a little bit more, we'd love to talk about it with you. Our details are on the screen and we look forward to hearing from you soon. Thank you.